Can you list these five companies in order of most potential to least potential? Tesla, SpaceX, Neuralink, Boring Company, and of course, Twitter. I love how you started with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. So, so I've actually, I was thinking about this a, a lot today at the gym while I was in between sets dying, uh, doing back and buys. So, there, there's two, there's like a framework that I've built. There is, there are companies that are, let's just say all five of them have the potential to change how humans interface with themselves and the environment into the future of civilization, right? But there are two distinct, I think, um, categories. One of the categories is moving around places and generating energy so call it infrastructure right and the other one is behavioral and sort of like psychological in a way so like how do we interface with each other and uh how do we build a system for humans to maximize their relationships with each other in whatever way that means right so there's two that that's how i lump it right so the infrastructure portion is obviously spacex tesla and boring company SpaceX is the, I'm going to get you from point A to point B in what, when we're talking about going at tens of thousands of miles an hour over millions of miles of distance and months of travel, right? Tesla is the, let's get from point A to point B in a much shorter <laughs> time scale. And also let's generate the energy needed to move those things. And then the boring company is the, I'm going to help you get around from point A to point B in places that it makes a lot more sense to do that, right? So that's kind of like the framework. And the second one with Twitter and Neuralink, Twitter is the the way I conceptually think about it, could be right or wrong. It's the, let's ensure that humanity has a way to talk to each other, you know, each, each person can talk to each other in the freest, most truthful way so that we don't run into an issue of the powers that be potentially uh, destroying civilization in some way, right? It really, and making it entertaining, making it valuable, making it so that the individual can uh, make a living out of doing those things, right? So it's, it's a very, it's very societal thing. And then Neuralink takes that one step further and says, I'm going to put a freaking chip in your brain so you don't even have to type that thing. <laughs> you can just, bloop, just think it. Here you go. Here are my feelings, right? But it's but it's a human to human uh, interaction, and then it also has sort of this initial step of uh, I'm going to help you cure diseases or say disorders that are related to uh, you know, some sort of some sort of neuro thing. So your brain is uh, you know there's something wrong with your brain, or you know you have a severed spine or something. So it also has some health implications. So then the question becomes, uh, which is more important? And to me, it's like insanely hard to say, okay, this company is more important than the other. But if I were to pick, and I'm 100% wrong, I'm sure, according to probably everybody, I think ensuring that humans will always have a way, uh, are maximizing their ability to not kill themselves because of their behavior that has been proven time and time again in history and really trying to mitigate that pain as much as possible and that potential as much as possible. To me, things like Twitter and Neuralink appear to be the foundational level of ensuring that never happens, right? So I think Twitter is the probably the most important. And this is crazy, right? This is crazy because you have SpaceX and Tesla, which are significantly higher. But I, I think with the advent of AI, with the advent of deep fakes, with the advent of tribalism and how crazy it's getting again, you know, we've had this happen multiple times in, in human history. And now we're in the digital age where it's not just humans doing that to each other, but we have now artificial intelligence that could start doing that to us without it, ha it having any feelings, right? And it could be hijacked by humans to do that. That seems like a pretty big deal. So it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a, I don't know. It, it just seems, it feels very important. So I would say Twitter is number one, which, is I think it's bound to get some reactions. And maybe there's some recency bias too, because there's a lot of new stuff around Twitter. Uh, Elon Musk has been making a lot of public appearances, just, just a lot of talk, right? So I, I very well could could very much, um, I, I, I could agree with that. And then I think closely tied to that is going to be Neuralink, because then Neuralink is going to be sort of that uh, way that 
it's going to change how we interface with each other. And then it could also help us solve the, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of health conditions that were thought were uh, incurable, like, uh, you know, paralysis and things like that, plus some, uh, neurological diseases and things like I said before. So, and then the, the person to person, uh, discussion through Twitter, but with our brains without having to type, that seems kind of insane. And it, it maximizes our ability to get ideas out there as quickly as humanly possible. In an age where AI could just decide to do something, it's probably helpful to have a brain-to-brain -brain contact without any middle interface so that we can catch AI going crazy. Like these are the, it's so conceptual and crazy, but like, that's kind of how I think about it. So that's number one and number two. So I apologize to everybody who disagrees with me and I'm sure all of you will, but this is how I'm thinking about it currently. Uh, the third one, I think it's Tesla. I think the ensuring that we have um, th the means to harness the, un the energy from the universe without using finite, res finite resources and say fossil fuels and natural gas in the long term is another thing that says, hey, let's make sure humanity doesn't collapse. And for us to go out into the different planets and the cosmos and whatever, we probably have to have that stuff pretty figured out before we arrive there and be like, okay, how do we make energy now? You know, I feel like that's quite important. That's quite important. Plus the point to point transport is very important as well. You know, once you arrive there, you need to wait in a way, a way to get around and electric cars can work anywhere. You don't need oxygen or anything like a combustion, internal combustion engine. Right. So it's the obvious move towards colonizing planets is you need an electric car, obviously. And then you get the electricity from the batteries. Hopefully you can mine the raw materials from those planets or moons or whatever. And if not, you use uh, SpaceX to bring the stuff, right? And that kind of puts SpaceX next because then SpaceX is the, is the sort of like mechanism that allows the humanity who hasn't killed itself because it's tribal and has a way to communicate with each other in the best way possible, theoretically, through things like future Twitter, whatever that is, X Corp, right? And then uh, using Neuralink, and we have our own energy. Now we can make our own energy. And now SpaceX is getting us there. And now we're getting uh, Starlink as well. So we're able to actually talk to each other in very long distances, you know, between Earth and Mars and Venus and freaking planet 26.8. A nine, seven, right in the freaking Andromeda galaxy or something. So that's pretty freaking cool. And then lastly is boring company because it's like, okay, just make the transportation bit a little bit easier <laughs> and a little bit faster. And then maybe it's also the tool that allows us to mine things uh, on the planets as well, you know? So, it, but that's like a rough, it's like, it, but at any point you can put, you know, you can say, well, SpaceX should be number one. Because without SpaceX, we're confined to the Earth and we're dead. I'm like, sure. But if we spread the seed of humanity and then we end up killing ourselves anyway because we're a bunch of tribal insane people in the, in the age of digital, in the digital age with artificial intelligence, Twitter might be more important because you'd have to make sure you have that in place so that we don't die, <laughs> right? So that's how I think about it. And uh, I've given it some thought, man, and, and it could change. It could change at any point, but that's, and I would love to hear everyone's comments on that. Cause this is, I'm probably going way out on a limb, but yeah. In terms of impossible question to answer. It, I try. it is impossible. <laughs> that's why I gave it to you. I think one of the most Thank you. interesting things about all of Tesla's companies or all of Elon's companies is there's so much potential and they're so scalable and all, all of the ways that all of the ways these, or all the ways these companies are at the moment they're going to be completely different in five years time, 10 years time. They're going to look completely different. So you, you chose Twitter. How different do you think uh, Twitter is going to look in five years time, 10 years time? Um, and have you thought about what that could maybe look like? Yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's going to be completely different. Uh, Elon himself has talked about wanting to make the everything app, you know, and uh, you look at the we look at the changes that have happened to Twitter in the last seven months versus compared to the last seven years, with eighty percent less people. I mean, it's like, it's like what were those people doing? Yeah. <laughs> it's like what happened, you know? So, so you're already seeing a lot of change in the last uh, in the last six to seven months since Elon Musk took over the company. So, I think the 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 finance we're gonna, it's going to have a large financial part of it. You know, banking, trading, crypto. Um, Forex, who knows? It could have all kinds of things, loans, um, 
all kinds of stuff, you know, exchange of value between one person and another for services, right? Uh, it could be like an inter intermediary, entertainment, um, I don't know, freaking Substack. They could be, they could purchase Substack and throw that in there, you know? There could be so many different things. YouTube competitor. There's so much. There's so much. It's software. In the end, it's software. And so the limiting factor becomes what software do you not want to write? Right? You know, and we've heard rumors about Elon starting this, or, you know, he on Tucker Carlson yesterday, he was talking about how he wants to start this thing called Truth GPT which is a horrible name, by the way, <laughs> please change the name, but it's, you know, try the, the concept is good. It's like a competitor to open AI and uh, Google is deep mind. You know, it's like this sort of third player now that's coming to, to the fray. So it's, it's, I think it's, it's quite obvious that the Twitter of old will just be a sub segment of what the new Twitter is going to be, which is going to hit a lot of different things all at once. You know, everything, everywhere, all at once. I haven't watched a movie yet, but I've heard it's a great movie. But it's going to be sort of that th sort of concept. It's like, hey, it's just going to be able to do everything. Literally, it's going to be able to do everything. It's going to be like human OS. Is how, you know, I've talked about it before. Like, what's the Again, what's the limiting factor for that not happening? Code. And oh, by the way, what's the thing that's coming up right now that is going to help you do that? AI. Okay. Doesn't seem like there's much of a limit there. So it's just a, it's just an option to... It's just going to be up to uh, Elon Musk and the Twitter team to decide just how far they want to take it. Because in software, really, your your imagination is a limit. And it's how, how good of a coder you are. And when you have a super, literally a superhuman assistant and in artificial intelligence helping you code those things, it seems like the literally it's uh, the sky's the limit. Hmm. So out of those companies, two of them are publicly traded. Three of them are private. If you had to go all in on one of them, this is going to combine risk tolerance, potential. Which company would you go all in on? Not financial advice, of course. You're giving me such loaded questions today. My God. <laughs> you haven't talked in a while. That's why. Mm -hmm. By the way, this is David. David is my media guy. He's excellent. He's great. Very, very good. Highly recommend him. Um, oh, man. So for me, it's like it, the calculation is longest uh, biggest long-term potential uh at the highest likelihood right so it's like those two are very like you said it's two, very two two very different formulas how many x's can i get on my return and what is the percent chance of success to me it seems like spacex i think has by far the biggest moat out of anybody which is reusable rocketry because it's so ungodly difficult to achieve and it's been ignored by everybody. And it's been how many years since SpaceX started reusing their rockets and no one's not even, no one else is even talking about it, you know? Whereas Tesla started the battery thing and then after a few years, people started getting on it. Like, hey, we have to do this. And it took a while, but it happened. And I would argue making a uh, electric car is probably, I don't know, it seems a little bit easier than a reusable rocket because there's only one company doing reusable rocketry right now, and they have been doing it for a long time. So I mean, that could be wrong. So from that standpoint, it seems like SpaceX has a gigantic moat. And then you also think about what is the biggest TAM uh, out of anything. And I feel like the, the universe is a bigger TAM than Earth. <laughs> right? So, okay. Hmm. I, it seems like SpaceX has a pretty good deal to it. So maybe maybe SpaceX was pri uh, public. Maybe that's a good all-in bet, but that might take centuries to play out. It could be like one of those things where we might have our first 1,000-year-old company or 10,000-year-old company because SpaceX has just had such a, you know, like that zero to one moment. And like, maybe that's one of those plays that once you become one, once you become that one company that can do it, you just can't like literally the only entity that can break you up is the government that says, yo, monopolistic chill, like give your something, something's got to happen here. Start giving your rockets for free to companies so they can launch it out. They start commoditizing the, the thing that they might socialize the technology. I don't know. It could be one of those things. Right. But I do think, I do think Tesla is probably, um, it's probably a close second, 
because they they have they have proven out the technology. They've been around for much longer. They're really the only mass market electric vehicle maker, and it's not that's still to this day not well understood that any other car company can come out with their own car, but getting it up to scale profitably in the millions of units as an electric vehicle maker with a secure supply chain is not as easy as it sounds because every other automaker would have done it already if that was the case. Ford makes negative 40% margin on their vehicles, and the Mustang Mach-E is a good car. The F-150 Lightning is a good truck, but they're not making money of it on it, and they're selling less than 100,000 units combined globally as a very experienced, incredible automaker, right? Jim Farley is great, but it's obvious that it's two different technologies. So from that standpoint, it makes a lot of sense uh, for Tesla to be second. Then you also have Tesla Energy on top of that. And you also have full self-driving, which is completely game-changing. So that's my answer. And uh, yeah, curious to hear what everybody thoughts there thinks there too.